Sports. Jayhawk fans might be a little down today. Last night in Kansas City, the KU football team's dream season was damaged with a loss to rival Missouri, costing them a Big 12 title game appearance and their shot at a national championship. But tonight, the Jayhawk Nation will rise again at the legendary Fog. to Lawrence, Kansas, and the first game of the Big 12 Pac-10 Hardwood Series. Tonight, number four Kansas plays host to Arizona at Allen Fieldhouse. It's a part of Beast Week, presented by Lowe's. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin along with Jay Billison. Welcome to a special Sunday evening affair between the Big 12 and the Pac-10. It is the first real test as far as KU is concerned. And Jay, it also was a huge test for Arizona without their head coach, Lou Olson, on the sideline. No question. It's a very difficult situation. He's been out for three weeks with personal matters that he's attending to. There's no timetable for his return, but the players have handled it well so far. And Kevin O'Neill, the interim head coach, this is not his first rodeo. Kansas, an experienced team, very big inside. They're going to have to do a good job of guarding their high-low and getting on the glass. Okay, it's time for the star watch. Bye along with Arthur. Chase Buttinger is an outstanding athlete, just a sophomore, can really rise up, shoot from the perimeter, he posts inside as well, and a terrific passer, averaging five assists per game over his last three, and Darrell Arthur is a budding star. Arthur plays inside but can step away, and his game is becoming more complete. Well, here's a look at tonight's starting lineups presented by Dish Network. Buttinger and a surprise starter, Kirk Walters, a senior. And as far as KU is concerned, it will be Robinson Chalmers, Stuart Arthur, and Sasha Khan. The officials for tonight's ball game, John Higgins about to throw the ball up. He is the referee of the two umpires, Tom O'Neill and Ted Hillary. In the air, the tip goes to KU. Arizona starts out in man-to-man. -man. This is a team in Kansas runs an awful lot of ball screens. They run high-low, and they slip the ball screen there by Sasha Khan, but he couldn't hang on to it. So a young man that we've been anxious to see, Jared Bayless, a freshman out of Phoenix. He's a point guard, but he's also a scoring point guard. Kansas also playing their man-to-man -man defense. They like to pressure. They will get out and trap ball screens at times. This is a very, very good defensive team. Roderick Stewart on Chase Buttinger. That's a tough matchup for Stewart. Shot clock is down to five. Stewart against Buttinger, and he knocks it down. As you can see in the short clock, Arizona down to about seven seconds on the shot clock. Buttinger can create something on his own off the bounce. Stewart obviously getting a lot more playing time with the injury to Sharon Collins, who's out probably until around the 1st of January with an injury to his foot, which they found out was in fact a stress fracture. Chip taken away by Sasha Khan. Here's where Kansas is dangerous off, but turnover. Robinson for three. Chase Buttinger with the smaller Roderick Stewart guarding and Stewart a great athlete but you can see ripping through trying to get Stewart off of him and putting the ball on the deck. That's a terrific pull up jump shot by Buttinger who's got the ability to go inside he can step away. One of the things he's got to do now as a sophomore he's got to get a lot tougher because players are going to try to get more and more physical with him and he's got to accept that physical challenge. No surprise this year is it. Hill picks up the foul. His first, team's first. Kevin O'Neill, the interim head coach. Interesting story. Well, Kevin O'Neill was a, a coach in college. He was an assistant under Lute Olson 18 years ago. 
went on to coach at Marquette Tennessee Northwestern and then in the NBA for several years but he's come back to try to help Lute Olson create a new culture at Arizona a culture of accountability and certainly a culture of defense the defense has slipped over the years and carry by Jared Bayless but as we mentioned Ron this is not O'Neal's first rodeo he's been around for a long long time and he did a terrific job at Marquette. He had really recruited some fine players at Tennessee. Left Tennessee not in great standing there, but you know, he's really matured over the years. I think he's more prepared to handle this job now than ever. Great slip of the screen. Arthur, basket is good, and they call a charge. I think they waved it off, no actually. Yeah. Tom O'Neill waved it off. And you can see a little screen here in the immediate slip and Sasha Khan was coming afterwards to set a second screen but great read of it by Chase Bunninger coming over from the weak side and laying his body on the line that's the kind of toughness that Kevin O'Neill wants to see from his defense this is a great start for Arizona in a very very difficult venue to play well, that's a grab and obviously a foul on Chalmers Coach Bill Mario Self Chalmers, his first personal foul team foul number three dealt really a surprise this ball club this year many people thinking uh, Jay without question could be one of the final four teams if they continue to progress as Puttaker gets the inbound pass and scores it he's got the first four for Arizona size advantage by Buttinger they decided that if Buttinger was guarded by a smaller defender they were just going to stick him in the middle and lob to him Kansas going to have to adjust to that that is way too easy and that is not the kind of defense Bill Self teaches with a screen out high. Inside to Arthur. Too many hands on him. Here you can see Chase Buttinger. Look at the size difference inside. They just lob it up to him. They can throw it to that left or that right hand. And he can just go up and get it. Nobody comes over to try to put pressure because they're too busy guarding their own man on the out-of-bounds play. Brillmeyer will come into the lineup because that's two quick fouls on Jordan Hill. Now Jordan Hill needs to learn how to play defense with his feet and not with his hands. Again, a foul. You know, Got to do a better job of anticipating these screens, communicating, and getting through them. Right now, they're getting caught on too many screens like they're wearing Velcro suits. Buttiger picks up the foul, his first. Another ball screen. Kansas sets a ton of ball screens with their big guys. Chalmers lobs it inside to Arthur. Arthur puts up the shot and score. Good job by Arthur with all the contact to stay strong, not lose the ball. Kirk Walters playing some minutes for Kansas for Arizona. Has not played much this season. Had mono last year. He needs to play his minutes early. Missed on the close shot. Stewart will push it. Robinson. Boy, what a great play. First by Russell Ro Robinson on the drive, but Roderick Stewart with a nice little leave behind pass to get it to Robinson. And Kansas starting to turn up the heat in the fog. Brandon Rush will check into the lineup. Now, everybody at KU knows the story, the rehab of his knee tonight. The doctors have prescribed no more than like 20 minutes for him to play. Well, Brandon Rush, as you see the end of that great sequence by Russell Robinson. Brandon Rush did a great job, Ron, on his rehab. Way ahead of schedule. He's coming into the ball game. He's wearing a brace on that right knee. He'll have to wear it until January, but he just needs to get his timing down and his strength back. Buttiger too hard off the back iron. Here comes Rush. Can't leave the ball. That's too easy. That's just bad defense by Arizona, Ron. Leaving the ball. Well, obviously, to the delight of the crowd. I was here a couple of weeks ago when he played his first ball game against Washburn, and they, he got a standing ovation when he came into the game. As turnover against Arizona, back to Rush, and he's got five quick points in less than a minute. Timeout, Arizona. It is a 9-0 run by the Wildcats. So let's take a timeout. 9-4 KU.
so much humanity came through here. My grandfather came with a small amount of luggage and a lot of hope. Everyone who came through here was looking for an opportunity and also passed down that opportunity to the next generations. I thoroughly believe Ellis Island to be a national monument. We should save these buildings. Some have been, but there's more to be done. Help us out here, America, and help us save Ellis Island. Go to weareellisisland.org. Sponsored by Arrow. Authentic apparel since 1851. Kansas with a five-point lead. Russell Robinson doing a great job of reading the crossover, moving his feet, staying in front. And Kansas has a break. Brandon Rush with the nice finish, not looking a step slow at all after that knee injury. Boy, it's great to see him back, and he's guarding Chase Buttinger, the tough assignment. And it's Rush again. Rush is just a great defender, and Chaucer Khan was wide open. They need to give him the ball. Reed, young freshman, just into the ball game, number 14. Coaches really like his early progress. Buttinger off the mark. Darnell Jackson, who just came into the ball game, he's the blue collar guy. Rebound. If you leave him alone from 10 to 12, he can knock down the jumper, but really good on the boards. Right now, Kansas able to pass the ball around on the perimeter. No pressure on them at all. That's what I'm talking about, DJ. In the past, teams have just left him alone as if he is not a danger. This year, he's taking that shot he's making. Well, a much improved player. Now you have to go out and guard him. That high low going to be more effective as a result. But right now on the defensive end for Arizona, they're letting Kansas make way too many passes. They've got to get up into them and guard him. Travel against McClellan. So as we go to break, much to the delight of the fans here in Lawrence, Rush is back and he's got five quick points. We'll be right back. All right, freight. Well, you already love the reliability of the big brown truck, but let's say you're shipping something really big or pallets of lots of little things. Now, wouldn't it be great if you could send any size shipment with the reliability and tracking you're used to with UPS? Hey, look, now you can. It's not just freight, it's UPS freight. Throw some mud flaps on here. It's not always just the thought that counts. Give him something he'll really love and want to use every day. The Philips Norelco Architect. Its flexible head removes even the trickiest hairs from his neck. Simplicity is giving him a gift he'll actually use. Starting at $3.99. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship coming in March. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. For all your home improvement needs, Lowe's, let's build something together. And Phillips Norelco. Phillips, sense and simplicity. KU off to an 11 to 4 margin. Jay? Darnell Jackson, as you mentioned, Ron, has really improved as an offensive player. You can see here as we go inside the play, when he gets the ball at the high post, you can see right now Sasha Khan has it. They're going to switch positions. He sets the screen. He's going to go down low. And now Darnell Jackson's going to get it. Look, there's no ball pressure on him at all. He can look down into the low post where Sasha Khan is going to duck in, or he can shoot the shot. Jamel Horn has got to get up into him and make him put the ball on the floor, turn his back, take away vision, because Kansas will cut up Arizona if they're allowed to shoot uncontested shots or make uncontested passes. Arizona has not scored in uh, just over three minutes and ten seconds. There's a run out ball screen. 
All alone is Arthur inside and Horn doing a good job of trying to keep him from getting the ball. Reed to Jackson the jump hook got it. Jackson had 10 points in the first half of a warm up game against uh, Washburn though, two weeks ago. It's so hard when the ball swings from side to side. The big guys for Kansas really do a great job of ducking into the lane and getting that low post position. You've really got to be aware and bust that duck in. Now there is Bayless. Jared, the freshman we talked about, outstanding out of Phoenix. And Bayless, you're not going to find a better competitor in the freshman class. Buttinger rebounds for the Cats. And rebounding an area where Buttinger really needs to improve, only averaging about five rebounds per game. It could be more in Arizona. Not sure-handed making catches. College basketball continues on ESPN Tuesday night with a doubleheader from the Big Ten ACC Challenge. First at 7, Georgia Tech will uh, take on the Indiana Hoosiers, and then it'll be Wisconsin against Duke. All of us Tuesday, 7 o'clock Eastern and 9 o'clock Eastern. And watching Indiana, you get the, a chance to see Eric Gordon, the dynamic freshman. Who is just scoring at will? Great win by Xavier over Indiana the other night. Then a ball screen, slip it. Rush air ball, Stewart, great hustle. The offensive rebounder has the luxury of being able to watch the flight of the ball, and it seems like 90%, Ron, of all air balls are taken by the offense because you're waiting for it to hit the rim after you turn to block out as a defender. One of the most famous air balls in uh, NCAA history was in Albuquerque as the tip back goes and, and scored by Horn. That was in that NC State and the Houston game. Well, Derek Wittenberg still insists that was a pass. <laughs> what a great move by Mario Chalmers. Do you, do you believe him on the pass? No, but he still keeps insisting that it was a pass. He wants an assist. Chalmers with the nice crossover and Bayless, who is really athletic and I think has the chance to be a great defender, just bites on it. And Chalmers, I think one of the underrated guards, one of the best defensive players in the country with his length and athleticism. Already fifth in Kansas Annals in steals. Ten more, he's going to tie Kirk Heinrich. And one of the things the coaches have talked about with Sharon Collins on the bench with the uh, stress fracture, that Chalmers has to step up even more, and that's every night. Well, he's got to be more aggressive, especially offensively, because Collins, the type of player, he's probably Kansas's best pure basketball player. And with him out, they're going to have to manufacture some additional offense because he gets it so easily. It's going to be Stewart with a reach in, fouling at Dillon. There's a look at uh, Collins on the bench. Has a stress fracture. It was actually healing when they found it. He had rolled or twisted an ankle, and when they went to take a look at it, they found a, a stress fracture in his foot that was already on, uh, you know, on its way to healing. So they, they think he's going to be out another couple of weeks if he continues to improve as steadily as he has thus far. Well, Stewart having to go to the bench with two quick fouls now, that confuses the rotation a little bit, if you will, as far as the guards. Again, with Collins out and unable to play. Arizona having a tough time finding any openings. McWise misses. Nick had been a starter. Dylan actually is the man who took over uh, his playing time. Yeah. Arthur gets the bounce and the two. That's four for him. The high low, getting it to a big guy high who's an adept passer looking in low. And then after you pass it in low, I mean, if Arthur had missed that shot, Jackson was right there to tip it in. Seven turnovers against the Cats. 20 to 9, KU. Victoriously. There are some crazy blades out there, so reach for the ultimate balm. Replenishing aftershave balm with Care Protect soothes and repairs the damage from shaving. Only from Nivea for Men.
fermented cools as you chew. New Five Gum. Stimulate your senses. Introducing the Craftsman AXS with built-in alarm clock, task lighting, workbench, power strip, MP3 pouch, one key master lock, and more. It's more than just a toolbox. It's Tooltopia. Don't just give a gift. Grant a wish. Sears. Spread some joy. Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers are back in the hunt in the AFC. At 7-3, they lead their division, but Willie Parker and a stout defense have no margin for error. Is it the week Miami gets its first win? The Dolphins visit the Steelers at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN's Monday Night Football. And our score with 11-24 left in the opening half. KU 20-9 over Arizona. Well, they talk about, Ron, football, a game of inches. Well, basketball's a game of angles. And the high-low run by Kansas, this out of transition. You can see the ball is going to be reversed to Darrell Arthur, or excuse me, to Darnell Jackson. Darrell Arthur in the low post. He's going to spin around and seal his man off. You can see when he gets the ball, he seals his man off, moves him up the lane. A good pass by Jackson, and Jackson is all there, all over the offensive glass. Nobody blocks him out. Now watch this spin and seal. Jamel Horn not ready for it, just a freshman, and he's going to learn to, to deal with that kind of move. That was just a great play of the angles and a great example of Kansas running the high-low out of transition and Darrell Arthur, the beneficiary. But if he had missed it, Ron, Darnell Jackson all over the offensive glass. Nobody boxed him out. Jay, this is a 20-5 to run by Kansas as the alley-oop not there. Rush on the follow misses. And the Cats come away with it. But Kansas run a little back pick out of the timeout and almost got an easy dunk. Wise dribbles into traffic. Buttiger takes it strong to the hoop and then three-pointer. McClellan with his first points of the night. Out of control by Russell Robinson and very fortunate to get the ball back. And Chalmers, a good enough athlete to gather that ball and still get it away to his teammate. But Arizona, way too many turnovers. Even after they do something good, they turn it over in such a deflating play. Now Buttinger having to go against Rush, who's just a superior defender individually. Jay, tell me your, your feeling about the situation at, uh, at Arizona. It is so totally unusual, and it's uncharted waters as far as Kevin O'Neill is concerned as an interim head coach and everybody else concerned. It is. It's very difficult. And first, we want to wish Lute Olson the very best and hope that he gets back soon. But he took leave on November the 4th to attend to a personal matter. And the truth is, we really don't know exactly what it is. Uh, he has said, and they have said at Arizona, it's not a health matter, but there's no timetable for his return. Kevin O'Neill said uh, about a week ago that, that Olsen was going to be back soon. But now, again, there's no timetable. So things have changed to where they don't know when he's going to be back. Nobody has spoken to him. They are unsure of his status. And that's very unsettling for a program. It's very unsettling for the players. Redeker misses on the long three. And the ball is going to stay with Arizona. And one thing Kevin O'Neill has done a really good job of keeping these players together. And as we mentioned before, Ron, this isn't his first rodeo. He's been through difficult times before. He's been a head coach so many different times. So he can carry him through this. But the longer this goes on, the more people are going to be demanding an explanation as to when, what, how, what's going on with Coach Olson. So far, Coach O'Neill said that the kids have been absolutely wonderful. Nobody has bugged him. Good pass right there, but a nice job defensively to knock it away. And Jackson, the last one to touch it. In the ball game, didn't have a chance to talk about the substitution with Cole Aldrich, a young freshman out of Bloomington, Minnesota, played at Jefferson High School up there. And Reed, also a freshman, back in for his second stint. Robinson guarding Buttinger inside after 
a post up, so he's got to stay in front of him and try to discourage any passes because Buttinger much bigger than Russell Robinson. McClellan picks up the foul. It's his first. first foul. Team foul number five on Arizona. Team foul number five on the Wildcats. Sasha Khan coming back in because Bill Self seeing this is a lineup for Arizona that he can take advantage of by pounding the ball inside. Immediately they go to the high low, but they're leaving Khan alone up top. They're not even going up to guard him because they, they don't think he can hit a shot from up there. Travel against Jackson. Brill Meyer coming to the ball game early here in the first half because of two quick fouls to Jordan Hill. And the 6'10 Hill could be mired on that bench for some time over there, picking up two as quickly as he did. Well, that's a play that Brillmeyer's got to complete. A terrific pass by Buttinger, maybe a little bit too strong, but Brillmeyer had a layup. He screened and immediately looked for his offense after the curl by Buttinger. Buttinger left alone and misses on the three. Rebound and the follow, scored an impossible three point play for Brillmeyer. Boy, what a great play by Brett Brillmeyer. All state out of Minnesota hasn't played a whole lot of minutes. He just blends in off the out of bounds play the deep shot after essentially running America's play to get Buttinger open at the top of the key. Nobody blocks out Brillmeyer. He went up high with two hands to get that rebound. Chalmers picks up his second foul. So Brillmeyer to the line trying to make it a three point play. And Buttinger missing on that long three. He has missed on his last three three-point attempts. But I'll say this, the coaching staff is really encouraging him to be more selfish and to shoot more. They say he is too unselfish and they need his offensive input. Yeah, it, he's going to draw so much attention from defenders. He's going to open things up for his teammates by shooting more. And Kansas still self very discouraged right now because his big guys have not done a good job of passing over the last four minutes. They have a lot of different opportunities to get to get baskets and they haven't done it. Well the turnovers Arizona 10 and for the season averaging what 11 and a half. And just doing a good job of forcing Arizona further out on the floor to run their offense out of an operating area but that's a good looking opportunity for Buttinger catching it in rhythm. Buttinger now with seven points. And that cuts it to a four point ball game. Yeah, Khan not being guarded at all out I mean, there. At all. He's lonely almost. Uh, Kansas now becoming a jump shooting team instead of pounding the ball inside. Arizona has a great opportunity here. Will Meyer too hard, and here comes Russell Robinson. And Russell feeds back to Khan and will jam it home. That's a four point swing, Ron. An opportunity. To get the game within two could be one, and a really poor decision, poor pass by Chase Buttinger. What was Brillmeyer going to do it with it out uh, without there? Shot clock about to go under ten. Wise has the ball knocked away. Six seconds down to five, and Robinson is going to be called for bodying up on uh, the offensive player. And it's the first foul on Robinson. And as we go to break, Buttinger will show you why he is being asked to shoot more threes. And at the other end, on the loose ball, Robinson back to Sasha Khan, and he dunks it home. We'll be right back. Get in. FedEx saved us with their overnight service, so we've added FedEx Ground for everyday shipping. Ground? That doesn't sound fast. Actually, Joel, FedEx Ground is faster than you think. We can't judge things by their name. Don't you agree, Harry? Absolutely. Eileen? Of course. Joy? <laughs> Bob? You see, Joel, we all agree that FedEx Ground is fast, despite the name Ground. Well said, Mr. Turkey Nick. FedEx Ground. Fast, reliable, and for less than you think. Welcome to the field of 328. The season-long journey continues with the Big Ten ACC Challenge, presented by Dish Network. 
This Tuesday, Coach K's resurgent Blue Devils battle the Wisconsin Badgers. And Wednesday, Tyler Hansbrough and the top-ranked Tar Heels take on a young Ohio State team. That is a crowd loser. Every game factors in. College basketball on ESPN. The bracket beyond the bracket. Fest deals like you've never seen before, like 0% APR plus 500 bonus cash. When Dodge unveils the most exciting sales event of the year, we want everyone to know about it. Announcing the Dodge event of a lifetime. For a limited time, get 0% financing on 2008 models, all backed by our lifetime powertrain warranty. That's the best warranty in the business, bar none. But hurry to your Dodge dealer today, because while the warranty goes on for a lifetime, this event ends soon. I'm Stan Perrette with the Sports Center 30 and 30 update and the latest BCS standings. Missouri is number one after knocking off Kansas last night. West Virginia holds the number two spot. They secured the Big East BCS berth by beating UConn. And Tim Tebow broke his right hand on a touchdown run against Florida State. That's his non-throwing hand, and the Gators expect him to be okay for their bowl game. More on Sports Center at 11 Eastern, or stay current with ESPN News. Ron? Okay, thanks very much. Chase Buttinger doing a great job of reading the defense on that last play. You can see Jamel Horn going to set a little screen for him here, and Brandon Rush goes over the top of that screen. Buttinger's going to read it and come right back out. Too much ground for Rush to cover, and a great read for a wide-open jump shot by an emerging star in Chase Buttinger. It's so important, Ron, when you use screens to take what the defense gives you, to read where the defense is going, and then go opposite. You have to use deception. Wise misses the second one, so he's got one point on the evening. Five-point ball game. About to go under seven minutes to play. You have to expect a set play out of the timeout. You can see there's the first screen and the second, but Rush couldn't handle the ball. KU 9-0 on fast break points. And nicely done right there, Jake. You hit it on the head. The selected play worked beautifully, and Arthur now with six points. Now they can run it on either side of the floor and, in fact, run it over and over again. The first big guy comes, screens and slips, and then the second ball screen from the next big guy. Very hard to guard. Romar with the screen out high. Still plenty of time in the shot clock. Wise left alone for three. Nope. Tipped by Rush. And touched last by KU. It'll be the Wildcats basketball. Here you can see the first screen coming by Darrell Arthur and immediately slips to the basket. The second screen was coming behind it, but not very well defended. Jamel Horn getting taken advantage of. You know, Horn is a really good young player. But right now he's playing in a very difficult atmosphere against very well-trained and experienced big guys. And he's having a hard time with it. Bayless back in the lineup for Arizona. Bunninger nails it. You know, we were talking about him at practice today. He is such a quiet young guy, and it appears to be just an absolute wonderful guy also to coach because he is so coachable. Well, he showed some toughness there when Brandon Rush got into him. He just knocked him backwards. Rush not there. And knocked out of bounds by KU. Ron Franklin along with Jay Billis coming to you in a special Sunday night game. Confrontation between the Big 12 and the Pac-10, all a part of Feast Week. 26-21, KU leading by five. And actually, KU has allowed Arizona maybe to stick around a little bit more than Bill Self might have liked. Well, Kansas's defense has been very good in this game. It's just their offense hasn't been particularly efficient. They've been turning it over, making some passes that haven't been strong. 
And perhaps taking some ill advised shots and Chase Buttinger starting to heat up. You let him get started and now all of a sudden he's making challenge shots instead of open ones. Got people all around him. He's now with, with a dozen points in this ball game in the first day. Chase Buttinger at 6'7", 6'8", able to move without the ball, running Brandon Rush off of screens, runs him off of one, now weaves off of another and squares himself very quickly to the basket. That catch and shoot opportunity, you're not going to see many big guys his size be able to execute. And part of the part of the reason he's able to do that, he's not only very skilled, he's also in much better condition. Spent the summer really working on his conditioning, not only with Arizona personnel, but with his own personal trainer, Trent Suzuki in Encinitas, California. And you can see it paying off in a game like this. Jay, tell us, a lot of people thought that he might try to come out last year. This is a very smart move on him returning for this season. There's, this no, there's no question. There's a difference, Ron, between being drafted and being prepared to make an impact at the next level. And I think the longer that Chase Buttinger stays in school, he wasn't ready to compete at the NBA level last year. He may be next year. Who knows? We don't, you know, he doesn't have to make that decision until the end of the year. But right now, it's all about getting better and helping your team win. And he's certainly gotten better. That's knocked out of bounds. I think this is, we're going to get a change on this call right here. John Higgins said that it was touched last by KU, and the fans at that end of the floor thought that uh, the Wildcats touched it last, and they have reversed it. By the way, this is a 15 to 6 Arizona run since their largest deficit of 20 to 9. Brandon Rush has played a good deal of minutes in this first half. Bill Self said he was going to limit Rush to 20 minutes for the game. But he really needs him to help guard Chase Buttinger. He's got size, he's got length, and he's got athleticism. He's the most effective defender for a player as unique and difficult to guard as Buttinger. Well, we're looking for 20 minutes out of Rush tonight. He has now played nine. Unlucky on that shot, and as they battle for the rebound, Arthur was fouled. Arizona wants to make Brandon Rush into a dribbler to put the ball on the floor. What he wants to do is catch and shoot or catch, put it on the floor with one dribble and pull up. If they can make him dribble, they feel like they can take away some of his offensive efficiency. Brillmeyer picked up the foul. He'll go to the bench, get a little bit of a breather, and Kirk Walters checks back into the lineup. Arthur with the turnaround jumper hit it, and he's fouled by Walters, who just came off the bench. A nice play, a little double screen staggered for Darrell Arthur along the baseline, and thought Roderick Stewart could have hit him a little bit earlier, but the nice little turnaround jumper, the foul by Kirk Walters, and you never want to foul a jump shooter, especially when you forced him into a fall away turnaround, Jay. Just challenge the shot, make him shoot over you. Walters, uh, as you mentioned, had mono last year, and it took him a long time to really get himself uh, back anywhere close to good enough shape to play. And the coaches say that within the last two weeks even that he has really shown a lot of improvement, a lot better shape, and he's really helping him. One of the reasons he started tonight. And he's still not feeling 100%. You know, they still don't really know what's wrong with him. He's had so many problems over the years. He's a he's such a good young player. It's tough to see him struggle like this. Boy, I'll tell you what. Buttiger is really having some kind of half. He's now got 15. Arthur, strong to the hope. He scored it, and he was fouled. Boy, that's the aggressiveness Kansas wants to see out of Darrell Arthur. He deferred last year as a freshman. Came off the bench and was happy to do it. But this year, he needs to be... He needs to be a star, really, and I think he's capable of doing it. And right now, on the other end, we're seeing a star in Chase Buttinger, who has been absolutely magnificent. Brillmeyer is going to have to come out. That's uh, a second foul on him, and Walters checks back into the lineup. And that's what's got to worry Kevin O'Neill is that the big guys in Kansas are going to be able to wear his big guys down through the course of 40 minutes. And these fouls are like body blows over the course of a fight, and they really pay off in the later rounds. Too hard off the back iron and inside the, the battle goes on and it looks as though, yep, the foul is going to be on uh, Jamil Horn, his first. That's his first person. Like Buttinger catching it with such confidence. And every time he shoots it, you think it's going in, but still Kansas going to the glass did a good job of getting Horn to climb a back. Stewart is going to go to the line and uh, Arthur spent some extra time talking with his head coach, Bill Self. 
One of the things that Arthur said, and I hope you can help shed a little bit more light on this, because he said, what I want to do this year, the coaches want me to score more but shoot less. And I'm assuming what they're talking about is everything he shoots is right around the basket. Well, be more efficient. I mean, he can hit a perimeter shot. He can hit a jump hook, a turnaround jumper. But they want him to be more efficient. And also, that means getting to the free throw line, because when you get to the free throw line, it doesn't count as a shot attempt. So they want him to be stronger with the ball and either score or get fouled every time he puts it up. Bayless, wow, what a quick stop and jump. Five points for him now. Bayless is a big-time athlete and a, a big-time prospect. Chalmers fouled by Nick Wise. So we'll take a timeout. 3.51 left first half. 31-29 KU. Wildcats making a run out of it. Remember that Monday when the whole dorm was watching New England stick it to the struggling Dolphins? And what that crazy Pats fan said he'd do if Miami actually won? And how after Brady threw that duck, you gave him a chance to back out of it, but he stuck to his guns? And how no one thought he would actually go through with it, but when the Dolphins pulled off the upset of the season, he actually went through with it? Remember that? Well, this Monday, when those same Dolphins battle Big Ben, Willie Parker, and the Steelers, maybe he'll shave his head. Dude. 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 They pick up touchdowns. Pick up the bucks and pick up their teams. Enterprise salutes NCAA student athletes for picking us all up. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Coming to DVD. Hey, Becca. <gasps> get some action. We're going to party and get crunk and brought down. <laughs> McLovin! Nice! I'm McLovin. Woo! Wow. Super bad on DVD December 4th. I'm getting that for show. I think that possibly, maybe I'm falling for you. Yes, there's a chance that I've fallen quite hard over you. I've seen the paths that your eyes wander down. I want to come to I'm Stan Verrett, Tom Brennan, and Doug Gottlieb are going to join me for the UPS Halftime Report. We'll show you Duke and Eastern Kentucky, the Devils, trying to get to 6-0 on the season. And Kansas State super freshman Michael Beasley actually overshadowed by one of his own teammates today. Plus, the BCS, which team is the number one team in the country? All that and more coming up on the UPS Halftime Report in just a couple minutes. Ron? Okay, thanks so much. 351 left in our ball game in our first half here. 31-29. And Buttinger has really put on a show in his first half. Boy, some people talk about Chase Buttinger not being tough enough. Well, he's been all the toughness for Arizona in this first half. Putting the ball on the floor with a pull-up jumper under pressure, reading the defense, getting effective matchups and going after him. 15 points, 6 of 12 from the field. And really, Ron, he's gotten nothing easy. He's had to work for everything. And the reason that Arizona is in this ball game right now is because of the play of Chase Buttinger. Well, it doesn't take a math major to figure out. He's got 15. The rest of the team has got 14. He's just injected them with a, a different level of toughness. He's going out and making big plays for them on the offensive end and really keeping a minute. And Kansas. They've got to start knocking their free throws down. This is a team that gets to the free throw line and they're really giving away points by not knocking their free throws. Well, from the free throw line, uh, KU only 50% tonight, three of six. And on the season, they've only hit 57 of 97 coming into this game. That's just under 60%. Bunniger had the ball blocked and the follow scored for Horn. Mel Horn's really got good speed, very athletic. 
just needs to get stronger to play a guy like Darrell Arthur, who's got a, a big size advantage on him. That was a push in the back there by Horan. That's going to be a tough matchup for him down low. And Bill Self trying to go after that matchup because he knows he can get fouls and get free throws. Second foul on Horan. You can see Horan over the top trying to get, he gets stuck behind. You can see as that ball's coming in. An effective tool I used to use is a little shove in the back. <laughs> At least that way you don't get dunked on, you know. I <laughs> yeah. figured a foul was much better than a poster. <laughs> so Arthur misses the first one. And you can hear the groaning from the crowd. You know, they know they're giving away points, and that gets into the player's head after a while, too. They don't want to hear the groan. They want to hear the cheer. I hear the groan all the time at home <laughs> when I start talking. 33-31, about to go under three minutes left to play in this first half. John Higgins picked up a foul uh, against uh, Russell Robinson. Kansas just has the ability to run big guy after big guy into the game. They can always keep a fresh pair of 6'10 or 6'11 guys in the ball game. And after a while, that's, they're going to wear you out or foul you out. It's going to be awfully difficult to keep up with them. And you were right, Ron. When they get Sharon Collins back, and when Brandon Rush gets completely healthy, I think we're looking at a team in Kansas that is going to be every bit as competitive for the national title as a team like North Carolina or Memphis or UCLA. I mean, they were right there last year losing in the Elite Eight to UCLA, and I, I thought they had a great chance to get to the Final Four and, frankly, to win it all. So we're tied. 33 all. A huge three-minute stretch right now for Arizona. A good defense by Bayless. Stewart, soft touch, got the turnaround jumper. Four points for him. Well, Jared Bayless did a pretty darn good job of defending that dribble weave, not letting Stewart turn the corner. Maybe get, let him get a little in a little bit too deep. Probably should have stretched it out a little bit more, but did a great job of attacking on the other end. You know, I mentioned something about Stewart picking up that second early foul. Now Robinson with three, so the rotation now is going to extend to the freshman, Tyrell Reed, out of Burlington, Kansas, number 14. And you'd like... If you're Kansas, you'd like Russell Robinson to stay out of that position, but the truth was he couldn't help it. You, know, you try to get in front of Bayless, he's just so strong and so quick and athletic. And he took it right to Russell Robinson and essentially created that contact, and there wasn't a whole lot Robinson could do about it. Jay, let me ask you something. In the last five to six minutes of, uh, of actual playing time, the body language for the Arizona players has absolutely done a 180. Bayless particularly, as far as confidence all of a sudden, it seems like they're exuding. Well, there's no question. Right now they're attacking instead of just reacting to what Kansas is doing. And another thing you're noting, Ron, is it's awfully quiet in here. And that's what you want as a visiting player is a quiet Fog Allen Fieldhouse. You don't hear it quiet very often. We have a couple of misses down at the other end. Now here's Bayless working against Reed, falling away, not there. Nice rebound by Rush. That's Rush has got to be well over 10 minutes here in the first half. And that's a bad shot on the other end by Jared Bayless. It was a, a shot without a lot of rebounding that his teammates didn't know he was going to take. And it was a challenge shot. Right now, Kevin O'Neill is telling him. Tell him that same yeah, thing. Take a better shot. At the line shooting two is Brandon Rush. See Bayless putting the ball on the floor. A good move, but Sasha Khan came over. I mean, he's shooting essentially over a seven-footer, and a guy in Tyrell Reed who's putting good pressure on the on the shot. You just can't do that. You can't give away possessions by taking bad ones. Buttinger had to come out of the ball game. He just picked up his second foul, and the last thing that they need is for him to get a third at the last two minutes of uh, of the half. So he's sitting and probably will for the remainder of the half. A little cross screen to post a guard, stagger, stagger. Now they're into motion. Push Sasha Khan. And one thing you don't want to do is foul. And send Arizona to the free throw line, allow them to score easy. Walter showing very good patience down in the low block. 
First foul on Khan. And Darnell Jackson prepares to check back into the lineup. And when Kirk Walters first got on campus, Lute Olson and his staff so excited about his prospects, but you know, that mononucleosis last year just completely knocked him out. Took a medical red shirt. And this year, as, as late as two or three weeks ago, I mean, he couldn't go very long in practice. He'd have to go a couple of minutes, then come out, and he was heavy-legged. He couldn't even dunk. Boy, almost put up an air ball there. But as I mentioned, the coaches say that in the last uh, couple of weeks, they have seen quite a change. But a lot more signs of life, and Walters didn't even show on that ball screen. Rush now in double figures. He's got 10. Boy, that's way too easy. You don't get that much time to shoot in a game of horse as Rush got there. Side of 10 seconds on the shot clock. Bayless puts it on the floor against Stewart, and I think Stewart fouled him. He did, and that is his third. Let's see, Ron, this last play. Little ball screen, and look at Walters. Never moved, just stood there and didn't give any resistance. You can see, watch Walters. Darnell Jackson comes out. He stays almost in the lane. Well, there's nobody there to stop Brandon Rush. He gets a wide open jump shot. You got to step up, give a hard show and limit what Rush can do off that ball screen. Well, he's played 13 minutes, has 10 points. And number 10, Jeremy Case, senior out of McAllister, Oklahoma, comes in. Stewart goes to the bench with that third foul. Well, and if Bayless has Jeremy Case on, Jeremy Case, an outstanding shooter, but he's going to be able to overpower Jeremy Case. This is a very strong, ultra-quick, super-athletic guard that's got a really nice pull-up game, can shoot the ball from deep, and a very effective and capable scorer. And your point is uh, well taken of the fact that he's 200 pounds and 6'3", and uh, Case is listed at 6'1", 190, and that might be a little, uh, a little gracious. Rush thought that Jackson was going to be breaking for the hoop. One of the things that Bill Self mentioned to us, he said, I got to go by what the doctors say. So if Rush is expending now going on toward 14 minutes, that means he's going to get very little playing time in the second half. You would expect, and I don't think they're going to take a whole lot of chances, but you never know. If the doctors say, hey, he looks fine, feels fine, he might play longer. Case on Bayless. Bayless put it on the floor. Reed almost took it away. 13 seconds on the shot clock and a three-pointer by Jawan McClellan. Boy, what a great play by Bayless to find McClellan and McClellan off the broken play. That's when you give up a lot of threes or off broken plays. Arizona's terrific job. Now, right now there's a three-second or so differential. Shot clock to game clock, so Kansas can take it all the way down to the end of the shot clock and still have an opportunity with game clock time to get a tip in or an offensive rebound. Shot clock is at five. Rush dishes back to Jackson, and Darnell almost put up an air ball. Got it too soon. Davis. Got it too soon. Jackson, what great hustle for a big man to run the floor and come back and get the block. We are at halftime, and we are tied at 40 apiece. And as they head to the locker room, Buttiger with 15 points to lead his ball club, and Darrell Arthur with 12 points to lead KU. All right, welcome into the UPS Halftime Report. It's Kansas and Arizona knotted up at 40 at the half. I'm Stan Varela along with Tom Brennan and Doug Gottlieb. And, Coach, uh, Arizona doing a pretty good job hanging around. A tough place to play, Allen Fieldhouse. Absolutely right. You know what? Uh, Kansas had them down 22 to 9. They really had them by the neck. And if they could have stepped on them there, it might have been a big difference. But we were wondering earlier, Stan, who was going to guard Budinger. And uh, we Rush had a little bit of time with him, Jackson, and also Robinson. But nobody stopped them. Ball 15 points already in the first half. I, I thought Brandon Rush looked like a guy coming off a knee injury trying to guard him. He was kind of just slowly chugging around off those screens. And Chase Budinger is a phenomenal athlete, really 
knows how to use those screens. And his 15 points mostly were abusing Brandon Rush. And look, the guy's coming off an ACL tear. So it, it's nothing to, nothing to really hang your head about. But consider this. Arizona turned the ball over 11 times early in the half. Jared Bayless was essentially a non-factor for the first half of the first half. And yet they're still in the game. I mean, Arizona took a good, solid punch to the mouth. Okay. They've seen their own blood. And they looked at it. And you know what? I'm impressed by it. They're not playing the greatest defense in the world. They were turning the basketball over. Bayless didn't play well the entire first, and they're still in this game. I think that speaks volumes for this team. And how about this, fellas? Arizona coming in, just checking for entertainment purposes only, was a 17-point <laughs> dog in Allen Fieldhouse. I think that speaks volumes for the inner self-toughness and confidence of Chase Budinger and Jared Bayless. Rush, Nobody's, Rush, nobody's Rush, thrown away their ticket just yet, by the way, if you got a 17. Don't worry about Rush's it. Rush's minutes are supposed to be limited as he comes back from that, from that injury. We'll see how much Bill Self limits if this gets tight down the stretch. You still you have to be impressed, though, by Arizona's stick to All right, this would be a great win for Arizona if they can hang on come March. Meanwhile, Kansas his other team has been making some noise. K-State's Michael Beasley among the nation's leaders in scoring and tops and rebounding. His Wildcats took on Ryder today, but one of Beasley's teammates actually took over the game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by City. Whatever your story is, your City card can help you write it. City, let's get it done. So I asked my dad where he wanted to go for his 60th birthday. Norway, he said, the land of our ancestors. We drank a pint at Ibsen's favorite pub. We sampled the local fare. We got new sweaters. I feel like yodeling. It was the trip of a lifetime, Dad said, until we went to the Hall of Records and discovered we were actually Swedish. Two tickets to Stockholm, please. Whatever your story is, your city card can help you write it. City, let's get it done. Hey, what you eating on? See a Chipotle grilled stuffed burrito. Mm. It's got the right amount of kick. Yeah, for a girl. This is the double Hellraiser with cheese. Oh, hey, ho! You're on what? fire, dude. Yep, I know it. Hey, ho! How's that Hellraiser treating you? Marinated carne asada steak spiced up with a smoky Southwest Chipotle sauce. It's Taco Bell's Chipotle grilled stuffed burrito. For taste, not fire. Think outside the bun. <laughs> Smarter and sleeker. Now with real-time turn-by-turn GPS navigation. It has the intelligence you require with the beauty you desire. The all-new BlackBerry Curve from AT&T. The world's leading provider of BlackBerry service. In new colors, titanium and red. AT&T. Your world delivered. With the old and in with the new. Right now, Vandergriff Hyundai is offering its best incentives to clear out the last of the 07 models. This is the time of year to get unheard of savings on Hyundai's most popular models. 2007 Hyundai Santa Fe's at 3.9% up to 60 months, or only $19,495 at Vandergriff Hyundai. And don't forget, each Hyundai is backed by America's best warranty. Vandergriff Hyundai, I-20 and Cooper, crossing the Parks Mall in Arlington. And now, life without Roadrunner. Oh! Game over. Dude, what's the deal? You just got owned. Thanks to you. It's not me, Chief. It's your DSL. You want an online advantage? You need Roadrunner High Speed Online. How can I compete without Roadrunner? One word for you. Not gonna happen. Bam! Again! Get the speed you need with Roadrunner High Speed Online. Call now, 972-PICK-TWC. Time Warner Cable, the power of you. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Chase Bredegan with 15 first half points and his Arizona Wildcats tied with Kansas 40 apiece at the break. Meanwhile, Coach K and his Blue Devils at home at Cameron taking on Eastern Kentucky. First half, Duke up seven. Taylor King for three. The freshman from modern day high school in uh, Santa Ana, California. Big day for him, and Demarcus Nelson, what an athlete. What a season he's having so far for the Duke. Check this one, Stan. Try and one. Wow. That, my friends, is called a heat check. <laughs> <laughs> that was Taylor King, the long three, then Gerald Henderson. And it's really easy for Duke 
against Eastern Kentucky. They win this one 78-43, 27 for King. 107 out of the last 109 at home against non-conference opponents. And then Wazoo over Air, uh, Air Force. Wazoo only gave up nine points in the second half last night to Mississippi Valley State. More of the giving mood. Yeah, yeah. Both, both these teams have been playing great defense. Washington State rolls right along. What about Kansas State and Michael Beasley in the Old Spice Classic taking on Ryder? He had 30 and four, uh, 30 or more in four of K-State's last five games. A little Beasley. spin around jumper right there. He is all that and more. He can get the ball, take it on a bounce and beat you as he does here. One dribble, pull up from 17 feet. Not many guys that size can do that. That's six foot 11 to it. But Andre Gilbert, the Juco transfer, had 22. K-State goes on to win at 82-69. J.J. Hickson, NC State and Villanova. Hickson. Ties it at 66 just moments ago. Malcolm Grant, the true freshman with the tip in. And Villanova wins it 68-67. More college basketball coming your way later on tonight. O.J. Mayo, we're talking about talented freshmen, taking on Randall Falker in Southern Illinois, 11.30 Eastern time on ESPN2. You don't want to miss that one. Two of the top teams, one of the top freshmen in the country. Lots more coming up on the UPS Halftime Report. After the big upset of LSU over the weekend in Kansas, Missouri, how's the BCS shakedown? We'll break it down for you coming up next. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Okay, delivery intercept. Well, say you just shipped the package to New York and it's on its way. When your customer calls and says, hey, I gotta run down to DC for a few days. Well, now what? Well, what if you could intercept the package and have it sent back? Or better yet, reroute it to DC. Well, you'd have those options if you shipped with UPS. It's not just delivery, it's UPS delivery intercept. Oh good, cherry blossoms are out. They want a sequel now. How are we supposed to get in touch with these people? Watch and learn. Talk to me. Sequel's green lit. How green lit? How green is money? Yes. Yes. Welcome to a network where dream teams happen. At the push of a button. Cisco, welcome to the human network. bathroom, a new chandelier, new area rug, and maybe we can paint the walls a nice ochre. Oh, come on! Okay, it doesn't have to be ochre. This year, you can create a warmer, more inviting home for your holiday guests. Get started now at the Home Depot. Go to Home Depot. Go, 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 go! At Dick's Sporting Goods, we've got gifts you can't buy anywhere else. Like exclusive Nike ACG and Columbia Whirly Bird Outerwear. Nike Tri-Bolt Fleece. Or Under Armour Chase Mock Neck. Only Dick's has Slozinger, Walter Hagen Golf. And exclusive styles by Asics and Nike Livestrong. Custom ESPN table games. Or Quest Fireplaces. And Field and Stream Rugged Boots. We've got the Garmin GPS Bundle. Horizon E900 Elliptical. And Powertech Home Gym. Or give a Dick's gift card. Every holiday season starts at Dick's Sporting Goods. Welcome back to the UPS Halftime Report. NFL Broncos and Bears tied at 34 in overtime. Robbie Gold with a field goal to win it. Devin Hester with a punt return and a kickoff return for a touchdown for Chicago. They improved to 5-6. and six. 49ers and Cardinals. Kurt Warner, 484 yards through the air. But this fumble in the end zone, Tully Banta came with a recovery. And the Niners win it 37-31. Patriots leading the Eagles right now 14-7 on Sunday Night Football. The Eagles without Donovan McNabb. And... A.J. Feely's already thrown a touchdown for an interception. Uh, an interception for a touchdown, rather. Asante Samuel took it back for a touchdown. Patriots have already clinched the AFC East due to Buffalo's loss earlier today. 
Latest BCS standings, Missouri, the number one team in the country. Tigers knocked off Kansas last night in the border war. They will face Oklahoma in the Big 12 title game, but right now they're early underdogs against the Sooners. West Virginia, number two. Mountaineers just dismantled Connecticut yesterday. They have one game left as well. Regular season game, the backyard brawl against Pittsburgh. Tim Tebow scored so many touchdowns yesterday, broke his right hand. Broke it on this touchdown run against Florida State. That's his non-throwing hand, though, and the Gators expect him to be okay for their bowl game. That'll probably be on New Year's Day. Women's college basketball, LSU and Rutgers rematch from last year's Final Four. Rutgers won that game in a blowout. Sylvia Fowles hoping to change that today. Fowles dunked on Wednesday against Louisiana Lafayette, but missed that one there. Second half, just over two minutes left. Heather Zurich, money. Rutgers up two. Under five seconds left, LSU down by two. Kiana Chaney, long distance three, not going to go. Rutgers wins again, closer this time, but Scarlet Knights take it 45-43. It's like two missed dunks, Dan. That's a lesson for you for pickup ball. <laughs> Scarlet Knights have number nine, Duke, coming up. Blue Devils taking on number two, Connecticut. And it's Connecticut with a 26-12 lead right now. All right, update on Villanova and NC State. Under a second to go, Gavin Grant fouled. Wow. Tough call. So it's he's a at bad the line. Call. It's a phantom call, but and Gavin Grant knocks down two of three. Grant knocks down a couple of free throws, and NC State wins 69 68. Why do you say it's a bad call? Well, because in, in the replay, which we get a chance to see here, uh, he wasn't touched, and the official who was right in front of the play didn't call the foul. The official was blocked who called it from underneath the hoop. And Grant with 15 points, and NC State knocks off the number 19 team in the country. The second half of our game coming up, Kansas trying to get it together and hold off Arizona at home. Ron Franklin and Jay Billis have the second half coming up next. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Volvo, who believes that life is better lived together. Volvo for life. And Dish Network. Get the most HD channels and the best HD DVR available from Dish Network. Uh, what day is it? Sir? So I haven't missed it. Today, today, everyone gets a rear seat entertainment system. And you, a rear seat entertainment system. And one for you, and one for you, and one for you, young boy. Rear seat entertainment system, everyone. This holiday season, lease the all-new 2008 XC90 SUV and get a complimentary rear seat entertainment system. Sports and movies in HD free for six months. Plus, get a free HD DVR upgrade. Get over 70 national HD channels today. And more on the way with Dish Network. I ask you for your number. I see the answer in your eyes. They're saying, baby, maybe, <laughs> when pigs fly. When Dodge unveils the most exciting sales event of the year, we want everyone to know about it. Announcing the Dodge event of a lifetime. For a limited time, get 0% financing on 2008 models, all backed by our lifetime powertrain warranty. That's the best warranty in the business, bar none. But hurry to your Dodge dealer today, because while the warranty goes on for a lifetime, this event ends soon. Fest deals like you've never seen before, like 0% APR plus 500 bonus cash. This ESPN production is available on ESPN HD, presented by Olivia.
That our halftime score were tied at 40. And Jay Billis said midway of the first half, better not let them stick around because Arizona will make a game of it. He's exactly right. Two things stick out at me. KU's getting out rebounded, and you got two starting guards in uh, Chalmers and also Stewart, or Russell Robinson, I should say. They got three fouls. Three fouls each, and, and Chalmers, as you mentioned, has two. So some foul trouble for the Kansas guards. They're going to have to be much more disciplined in the second half. But Arizona shooting six for 12 from three point range led mostly by Chase Bunninger. 15 points in that first half. Did a terrific job of finding openings, setting himself to shoot. Brandon Rush having a difficult time keeping up with him. Everybody having a difficult time keeping up with him. And Kansas missing some opportunities. Eight turnovers in the first half for Kansas. Not able to secure the ball when it's loose. Bayless hitting McClellan in the corner for another one of those six open threes. And Kansas right now tied, but they are scoring a lot of points in the paint if Kansas keeps pounding the ball inside. They're going to get the big guys for Arizona in further foul trouble as well. Well, the last time at Arizona led was at 17-25 uh, remaining in the first half, and that was at 4-2. to two. If they score right here, they'll take the lead for the second time of the evening. And Brandon Rush starting the second half for Kansas. Wilmar off the mark. Chalmers battles, and the ball taken back by KU. Telling us he was going to limit the minutes of Brandon Rush. Told that he could only play him for 20. He played him for 15 in the first half. Great pass. High percentage. It got just what they wanted. And Darnell Jackson shot it a little too hard. And Bill Self not at all upset by that. That was just a miss. No big deal because they ran it exactly the way they wanted to. You want to finish that play, but that's nothing to get too worked up over. Hill. Floor. Buttiger tries to take it away. Arizona comes back with it. Bayless with the jumper, and he'll can it. Now, there have been some loose balls in this game, Ron, where Kansas has sort of bent over at the waist to get the ball. They need to get on the floor after it. They need to secure that ball because points are at the other end of it. Another high-low play. Oh, what a block! Jordan Hill got a big hand up on it. And Arizona with their second lead of the night at 42-40. Jackson will pick up the foul. Boy, a poor job of transition defense by Kansas's big guys. Darnell Jackson missed two shots inside. The first easy one, the second one, he got sent back. And you've got to run the floor with a sense of urgency. Ran the play exactly the way they wanted to. And just a great block by Jordan Hill. Once that shot's blocked and Arizona secures the ball, you got to get back. Well, he picked up those two early fouls, and he only had three minutes in the entire first half. So he's one of the guys, if he keep his nose clean, can uh, really help Arizona in the stretch right here. Khan comes back in. Jackson goes to the bench for KU. Jordan Hill, you can see, shooting 78% from the field. That was his number from the line before that last shot. And Coming into this ballgame, 21 of 27 field goals on the season. Rush back to Arthur. Bodiger, nice anticipation. Two on three on the break. Good job in transition by the Jayhawks. And a matchup with Darrell Arthur guarding him now. He can take Arthur through some screens. There's got to be a switch. If he does, he needs to take advantage of, of Arthur on him on the perimeter. Nice pass. Connor Rush, one of the two, got a hand on it. I, I think it was Con. Jordan Hill will learn about that as he gets older. He went away from the contact and allowed an angle for a shot blocker instead of going right into his chest. Buttinger, left hand, misses the shot. He'll go to the line for a couple. See, when Jordan Hill gets the ball inside, a terrific pass. He was wide open. And he, instead of, he tries to avoid the block, goes into a little turnaround jumper mode and allows Sasha Khan the opportunity to block it instead of going right into his chin, creating that contact and getting to the free throw line. 
But Buttinger made a great move when he caught the ball. A little shot fake. Got Brandon Rush up on his toes and was able to go around him. That shot credibility he's got because he can knock down a perimeter shot. You've really got to respect it. And just a, a simple little shot fake is going to get a defender off balance. Yeah, when he forces the issue like that, and as you said, with the respect that he commands because of the shot, he has made things happen early on. His ball club on top by four. Yeah, and it's not selfish for him to look for a shot. It's good offense. His teammates want him to shoot it when he's open. When he draws a defender and doesn't have it, that's when he can pass it off. And he's shown that he's a, a very good passer with 15 assists over his last three games. Brumar picks up his third foul. He will come to the bench and quickly off the bench and back into the ball game is Horn. Freshman out of San Diego. Well, we saw Kevin O'Neill over there. He's got to be feeling a little bit like Forrest Gump with his team. You never know what you're going to get. And he was unsure of what he would see from his team tonight. And he has seen a really game effort from them hanging in here at a very difficult place to play. Jay, let me ask you a question. From his reputation as a head coach in college, uh, and also in the NBA, you always know one thing, that his ball clubs are going to play hard. They are going to play hard, and they're going to play really good defense. He demands that. But you're changing a culture, trying to get a more defensive mindset out of a team. It's not something you just come in and, and flip a switch. It takes time. And that culture of defense is going to have to be built over time because their, their first four games, they did not defend very well at all for 40 minutes. They've done a much better job in this game. Well, uh, Jay, the chess match is really beginning because the guards are the ones who are in foul trouble for KU, the big men for Arizona. That is the third foul. Walters is going to come back into the lineup very quickly. Number 42, Jamil Horn goes to the bench with his third. And thus far in the game, Kansas's opportunities have been higher percentage. They're getting more looks in the lane, while Arizona getting more jump shots. Arizona still needs to attack the basket off the dribble, and Jared Bayless, the freshman from Arizona with the ball now, is one of the guys that can put the ball on the deck and attack the rim. So two points from the free throw line. That's all that KU has been able to muster in the first two and a half minutes, or three and a half minutes, I should say, of the second half. Turnover, though, against the Wildcats. Bale is trying to catch it on the run. And difficult to catch it, put it down without walking. Bale is doing a good job of getting over that flare screen. That's difficult to guard. Stewart. This game for him tonight has got to be extra special. Of course, he is a transfer from Southern California. So he is familiar with competing against the Wildcats. Bayless made a freshman pass, threw it right at his ankles. And Mario Chalmers got away with one there. He tried to flop a charge and really took a gamble because it left Bayless essentially wide open for a shot or to draw a defender and Bayless just made a poor pass tried to rush it <laughs> Sasha Khan the lob inside and the jump hook is perfect so really nicely done the ball screen up top to drag the defender and then the nice little duck in seal on the weak side by Sasha Khan. Timeout called by Arizona as we go to break. Sasha Khan picking up his sixth point of the night. Watch this jump hook right here. Knocks it down. We'll be right back. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship coming in March. Hey, tell me something. There's a delicious Subway food montage going on right behind me, isn't there? Yep, I could smell it. Well, that's going to make it kind of hard to focus, but here we go. An ode to the Subway feast. Turkey, salami, cheese with roast beef, pepperoni and ham. Write this down, chief. We got them all on freshly baked bread. The Subway feast. It's as big as my head. Beat that, Jared. <laughs> Subway, eat fresh. Everyone, 10 and up. Right
Ratchet and Clank Future. Tools of Destruction. Only on PlayStation 3. Starting at $3.99. the perfect gift. You know it. Shop Sale's incredible selection of diamond right-hand rings. Save on this one carat diamond ring, now just $2.99. At Sales, the diamond store. Uh, what day is it? Sir? So I haven't missed it. Today, today, everyone gets a rear seat entertainment system. And to you, a rear seat entertainment system. And one for you, and one for you, and one for you, young boy. Rear seat entertainment system, everyone. This holiday season, lease the all-new 2008 XC90 SUV and get a complimentary rear seat entertainment system. Kansas is back on top, 46 to 44, and inside the play, Mr. Billis. Well, Kansas runs really good offense, and you can see Sasha Khan setting a little down screen, and right now, Comes down on the right side, sets a down screen. Now Darrell Arthur is going to set a little ball screen and drag the defender off. You can see Sasha Khan again going to seal inside and duck in. And after he comes off that screen, immediately looks for that duck in. Nice little pass from Russell, Rod or excuse me, from Roderick Stewart. And Sasha Khan turns back into the middle and able to go over that left shoulder for the right-handed jump hook. That's very well executed off the screen and seal. Wise works against Chalmer. Buttinger left alone. Does not have a field goal until now in the second half. And it came at the 15-29 mark. Rush at the other end. Unlucky in the shot. And grabbed down by Hill. Now Brandon Rush having a tough time staying connected to Chase Buttinger. He's just running in one direction and then immediately running off screens and taking him side to side. Rush having a tough time keeping up. So let's take a timeout. Arizona back on top by one. We've got a good one going in Lawrence. Uh, what day is it, sir? So I haven't missed it. Today, today, everyone gets a rear seat entertainment system. And to you, a rear seat entertainment system. And one for you, and one for you, and one for you, young boy. Rear seat entertainment system, everyone. This holiday season, lease the all-new 2008 XC90 SUV and get a complimentary rear seat entertainment system. Can't talk now. He's gone. Busy! I can't get that. I'm in the zone over here. Yeehaw. You know how FedEx helped us with all our shipping needs? Overnight, ground, even the heavy stuff. And with fast, reliable deliveries and flexible pickups, I don't think Scott's gotten used to not being so busy. Work it, work, busy bee! Grow your business with customized shipping solutions from FedEx. <laughs> Victoriously. There are some crazy blades out there, so reach for the ultimate bomb. Replenishing aftershave bomb with Care Protect soothes and repairs the damage from shaving. Only from Nivea for Men. Introducing the Craftsman Entry Ease Fingerprint Activation Switch. It does more than just securely open your garage. It securely turns on just about anything, anywhere. Don't just give a gift, grant a wish. Sears. Stanford Red back here in the studio. What a game of the Old Spice Classic between NC State and Villanova. Villanova's Dante Cunningham working hard underneath the glass. Puts his team up one. At the other end, NC State's Gavin Grant's got it at the top of the key. Foul! Behind the arc, Jay Wright can't believe it. He got three free throws, missed the first one, made the second one. Here comes the third one. And NC State up one. Last chance for Nova. Cunningham did get a chance at a tip. 
But it doesn't go, and Sydney Loan Company get a nice early season win that could pay dividends later, right? Okay, Stan, so what you're saying is the folks from Nova didn't think the Old Spice uh, ending was very sweet as a smell, huh? 47-46, Arizona on top. Russell Robinson looking for him, and he is back out on the floor. Russell tonight, no points, three fouls, two assists, two turnovers in 14 minutes. Robinson, air ball. So here's a reminder, college basketball continues on ESPN Wednesday night with a doubleheader from the Big Ten ACC Challenge. 7 o'clock Eastern, NC State and Michigan State kicking off Jimmy V week. Then at 9 o'clock, it's Ohio State and the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dish Network. Khan just picked up his second foul. Kansas trying to trap off that double high screen and Khan just leaning into it a little bit too much against the smaller Nick Wise who's lost about 28 pounds over the last six months really has done a great job eating better and taking care of his body he looks like a totally different player and actually Ron dunked with two hands for the first time as the slimmer Nick Wise the spelt Mr. Wise huh block nice job by Chalmers there to get outside. Still 10 seconds now on the shot clock. They're gonna go one four low, give Bunninger a chance to work. Holds up against Rush, shot it a little hard. Gonna be taken back by Hill. That's a lot of time to spend on the defensive end for Kansas. Arizona's gotta to continue to make them guard. If they get something early, great. If not, let's keep running. Rush off the screen after screen. A nice, nice bounce pass and he misses the shot. Kirk Walters was right there. Buttiger was about to pick up a beautiful, beautiful assist. And he couldn't get it to go. Arthur picks up his third foul. Buttinger is running Brandon Rush off screen after screen. He's going side to side and Rush is having to chase him all over the floor. And when he's chasing, he's falling a bit behind. And that means help side has got to... Give him some additional help, and that's going to open some things up for passes. So that means that uh, big number 32, Darnell Jackson, will come back into the lineup. And it means that Arthur will have to sit. He's got three. And Brandon Rush already over his 20-minute limit. And that pass is closer to Jay Billis than it was to a teammate. On the floor and touched last. Sided of the two officials here. John Higgins says it comes back. It's going to go back to Arizona. Arizona with a two point lead. Boy, the time of possession they've had in this second half. It seems like Kansas has been on defense for the last 90 seconds. It's, normally you only look at that in football games, but you're right. In this one right here, the possession time by Arizona has been huge. Yep. Got to keep that pivot foot established, not go too fast. Well, we talked about the foul trouble. Here's a look at it. Arizona Horn and uh, Brillmeyer with three each. Robinson, Stewart, and Arthur with three apiece for the Jayhawks. So Arizona getting the better of that. Rush. Dishes to Jackson. Hill with a nice job of taking away the baseline. And now Hill will pick up the foul for a push. Now Hill feeling like he had pretty good position and that Jackson created that contact, but that's the way play in the post goes. It seems like every you're not in vogue if you don't have three. Hill just picked up his third foul. And the Brilmar comes back in. He has three uh, fouls as well for the Wildcats of Arizona. Double back screen. Chalmers. Block. Actually, I think Buttiger got that instead of uh, 54, Kirk Walters. On the floor, they battle for it, and possession error says it will go back to Kansas. Nothing there on that drive by Mario Chalmers. You have to be smart and pull it back out and run something if you don't have anything off the initial drive as Rush goes out. And he played, what, a good seven minutes or so in this half. 
And that puts him to 22 minutes. It would be interesting to see if he's back. Uh, yeah, you're, you're exactly right. I just wrote it down. 12.55 is when he went out. We'll see if and when he does come back. And just run a little dribble weave. And Arizona doing a pretty good job of guarding. Dished it to Jackson. Too close a quarters. That's a difficult catch for most big guys to make. snares on the field behind us, which really shocked me. We were right here in the heart of the, the Jayhawk big wigs, and you, you heard somebody holler, help him. him. Nobody was back for the inbounds pass. Yeah, I wanted to get the ball inbounds. Because <laughs> he knows his team, the Wildcats have a chance to win. I don't think that's a Jayhawk fan that was hollering there. Bayless. Nope. Tough shot. Walters picking up the push. Two fouls on Walters. That's the second person foul. Team foul number four on Arizona. Forty-eight, forty-six, Arizona. KU led by eleven points back in the first half. You can't jump and leave your feet to make a pass. It's So we're going to take a timeout. 11.58 left in the ball game. Two point lead, Arizona. Do you have what it takes to get a great deal? The latest phones are on sale at Verizon Wireless. They come with America's most reliable wireless network, and they're going fast. So get to a store by November 26th. If you can. The gifts you got to have are at Verizon Wireless. Versatile Samsung phones like the Multimedia Gleam, the Juke Music Player, and the Stylish U740. On sale for just one more day. Verizon Wireless. Welcome to the field of 328. The season-long journey continues with the Big Ten ACC Challenge, presented by Dish Network. This Tuesday, Coach K's resurgent Blue Devils battle the Wisconsin Badgers. And Wednesday, Tyler Hansborough and the top-ranked Tar Heels take on a young Ohio State team. That is a Every game factors in. College basketball on ESPN. The bracket beyond the bracket. You're on the market for a Toyota car or truck this Friday beginning at 7 a.m. New Toyotas at 25% off MSRP. Plus a seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Plus 0% financing for 60 months. For 48 hours, Vandegrift Toyota thanks you for making them the number one Toyota dealer in DFW. This Friday beginning at 7 a.m. New Toyotas 25% off MSRP. Plus a seven-year, 100,000-mile mile warranty plus zero percent financing for 60 months vandergrift toyota across from the parks mall in arlington roadrunners kicked online speed into high gear with roadrunner turbo that's awesome that's roadrunner turbo i want to download more video and music and movies and games for online speed there's roadrunner fast don't hurt yourself and now roadrunner turbo to crank it up even more Now's the best time to turbocharge your Roadrunner for the fastest experience. Don't delay. Call today. Another great service delivered over Time Warner Cable's advanced fiber network. I'm Stan Perret with a SportsCenter 30 at 30 update. Sunday night football turning into quite a surprise. The Eagles lead the Patriots 21-17 in Foxborough. A.J. Feely, the Eagles back in quarterback with a pair of touchdown passes so far. Latest BCS standings are out, and Missouri is the number one team in the country. West Virginia is number two. For all the Jayhawk fans watching, their football team falls to number five. More on SportsCenter at 11 Eastern, or stay current with ESPN News. Okay, Stan, thanks very much. Ron Franco along with Jay Billis back in Lawrence, Kansas, and maybe a lot better ball game, a lot closer ball game than anyone locally might have anticipated for tonight. And one of the reasons is rebounding total right now as the ball goes on the floor. KU is being out rebounded by Arizona 26 to 18. Kansas right now coming down in transition after that. Turnover by Kirk Walters. They need to get something good, something inside or an open shot from the perimeter. Good misses, take it away. Here comes Arizona. And it's Wise who pushes it up. Everything bunched up for Kansas. And one of the problems, they don't have a lot of great perimeter shooters. Without Sharon Collins in there, their offense is missing a spark. What a move. Wise blocked by Collins. 
his second of the second half. Stewart at the other end, and he jams at home. Stewart in double figures. Let's see if that is the spark that KU needs. Well, it's certainly the spark to get this crowd in it. Roderick Stewart. What a play. Nick Wise taking the ball to the basket after a great move, but when you're 5'9", you can't take it to the other side. You've got to take it up, try to draw the contact, or try to draw somebody to pass it off, but what an aggressive play by Roderick Stewart. So we're going to hold it right here. In fact, let's go back to 2003. Last time these two teams met at Lawrence, that was on January the 25th. Kansas broke out on top early, led by 20 with five minutes to go in the first half. But after a sideline chat with Lou Dolson, Salim Stademeyer lit up the Jayhawks with a career-high 32 points, and the Wildcats snapped a 25-game home winning streak by the Jayhawks. Well, that, that was an explosive, explosive scoring Arizona team. And Arizona has upset Kansas before, perhaps the most notable being in 1997 in the NCAA tournament when Kansas had that truly great team with Rafe LaFrance and Jacques Vaughn. And I mean, what a great team, Paul Pierce. And that was when Arizona beat three number one seeds on its way to the national title. Ball tipped and give credit to Russell Robinson. He got a hand on it to deflect it. An outstanding defender that's really struggled in this game, but making a big play there. We are tied at 48. It is the sixth tie of the evening. And about to go under 10 minutes to play in our ball game. Con with a screen out high for Case. Stewart for three. A good box out by Brillmeyer. This crowd, particularly the student section, up and making a lot of noise because I think for the first time tonight they are realizing as Wise puts up a three and misses that uh, Arizona is in a position and could very easily win this basketball game. Uh, this Arizona team needs to show some patience. Chase Buttinger on the bench trying to get some rest. And they can't get going too fast. You've got to be patient enough to see openings. Going to a set play call now. Bayless for three, got it. Russell Robinson went underneath that little handoff, and Bayless made him pay. 16 points for him, Jay, and Buttiger prepares to check back into the lineup. After getting a little bit of a blow and extending a lead, that's exactly what Kevin O'Neill wanted to see. Boy, Wise doing a great job of reassuming pressure on Jeremy Case, who can't get away from him. Boy, he forced him all the way out to midcourt. Jeremy's uh, father played uh, college basketball with uh, Bill Self. Well, Jeremy was recruited by Roy Williams here, a terrific shooter. And Brandon Rush coming back in, so the 20 minute limit being exceeded here. And they need it. Shot clock is now under 10. Chalmers. Long pass rushes right there. Beautiful with that off the ball screen, going against the grain, the little backdoor cut by Brandon Rush, and the great finish. Budinger, jumper on the way over Rush, missed Arthur back at the ball game, and he rebounds. And Darnell Jackson wide open, but pretty good pressure on the ball. Jackson with the tip, not there, and Bayless saves it, and they'll push it up. Chalmer shot that ball as an afterthought. Wasn't prepared to shoot it when he came off the screen. Wilmar with a really tough screen, and Rush went down hard. McClellan back to the lineup. They need to, they need to keep running 
rush off screens because Buttinger has had great success moving him from side to side. They're just poor post defense there by Darnell Jackson. Third foul on Jackson. Show as we go to break. 51 to 50 Arizona on top and a look at a couple of dunks by KU this last one by Brandon Rush but still Arizona up by one. I've been hearing that SAP has business software for mid-sized companies so naturally I did what you'd expect. Had my hearing tested. Turns out I'm fine. <laughs> As an investor, you want someone to be there for you and not just when the market's open or if your account is big enough. TD Ameritrade offers 24-7 phone support from licensed staff and 100 branch offices. Ask a question, get help with a retirement plan, someone's always there. With TD Ameritrade, you make your own decisions, but you're never really alone. Independence is the spirit that drives America's most successful investors. SAP software has made running my mid-sized business much easier. Actually, I have time for lunch. It's all very glamorous. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's for all your home improvement needs. Lowe's, let's build something together. And TD Ameritrade, the independent spirit. And our score, Arizona 51 to 50. And Jay Billis, how about inside the play again? Well, Kansas runs a lot of great sets, but this one run to get a ball screen and then a lob on the weak side. You can see Darnell Jackson, the run out ball screen. Ball's going to come off the top as it does. Watch Juwan McClellan. He's guarding Brandon Rush. He's just going to take him back, uh, back door. And everybody caught watching the ball here and the nice little lob. And Brandon Rush with the terrific finish. You can see McClellan watching the ball. He allows Rush to get behind him. And Brandon Rush knows how to finish when that ball is up in the air. And we don't want to make any mistake about this. Brandon Rush, only about 80%, but his knee is completely sound. He has knocked all of his tests out of the box. I mean, he has done great with his testing. That knee is perfectly fine to play, but Bill Self wanted to limit his minutes tonight, but hasn't been able to due to the, due to the circumstances. Keep in mind that dunk is the first points that he has in the second half. And in fact, Arthur is scoreless the second half. Wow. He's done such a great job of moving without the ball, running Brandon Rush into screen after screen. Arthur, he heard us. First two for him, and he cut up the 7-08 mark. Buttinger, by the way, now with 22 points. We got to keep going to Buttinger. I mean, Kevin O'Neill spent a lot of time in the NBA. You go to the hot hand, and he is the hot hand. Can't pick up your dribble along the baseline. The baseline and the sideline essentially act as a triple team along with your Kansas defender there. You can't pick up your dribble in that area. So we'll stay right here rather than taking the timeout with him. Let's take another look at Buttinger and his uh, working away from the ball and getting loose. Chase Buttinger is doing a great job not only of moving without the ball but of going slow to fast. If you noted there, Ron, he just waited under the basket gave a little bump to Brandon Rush and came off of the screen and he was ready to shoot when he caught it. And that's big time basketball there by a young sophomore Chase Buttinger. You know I mentioned back in the first half about what a pleasure to coach but you see the expression that he has right now. It, you never see him here at anybody for that matter. He talks to his teammates but he plays the game and that's where his focus is and absolutely nothing else. And they're trying to get him to be a little more vocal to help lift up his teammates as well and he's lifted up his teammates with his great play in this game but they want him to be a more vocal leader and 
try to take this team over because with young guards, this has got to be Buttinger's team. With a handoff up top, and now the ball screen. Good job by Sasha Kahn. Buttinger thought that ball was tipped by a KU player, and that's as vocal as we've seen him tonight. Well, that's where you've got to be a little stronger with the ball. Big possession right now for Kansas. Turnovers mounting for Arizona, but still they've been able to maintain a two point cushion. There's the ball screen slip, second screen. They're going to keep doing it until Arizona makes a mistake. Chalmers tries to save it and does not. Throws it right here along the press row. Arizona starting to figure this out a little bit and how better to guard it. They were taken advantage of in the first half. But in the second half, defensively, they've done a better job. And now Russell Robinson going on Buttinger. Put a fresh body on him, chase him around. But Buttinger's got a size advantage. He can shoot over Russell Robinson. Inside, it's Hill. Jump hook, got it. Boy, he shot it quickly before Terrell Arthur could get up and really try to block it. And Bill Self wants a timeout. College basketball continues on ESPN Tuesday night with a doubleheader from the Big Ten ACC Challenge. First of all, 7 o'clock Eastern, Georgia Tech will take on the Indiana Hoosiers. Then at 9 o'clock, it is the Wisconsin Badgers against the Duke Blue Devils. Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dish Network on ESPN Tuesday night. Well, Georgia Tech's not only got the challenge of D.J. White inside, but also Eric Gordon out on the perimeter. One of the most dynamic freshman scorers in the country, along with Michael Beasley. He can put up 30 on you anytime. Shoots it from deep, can really take the ball to the basket, finishes at the rim. He is a big time player. You Look see at those numbers. Yeah, average, he's going to lead the Big Ten all season long. I mean, in the loss to Xavier, he had 20 points. It was a great defensive job by Xavier to hold him <laughs> to 20. Still got to the line 12 times, made 12, all 12 free throws. This guy's a big time scorer. So I'll tell you that that other game, Wisconsin at Duke, that's going to be a great game because Duke's really bringing a lot more pressure now. They're playing a different system, and they're going against a team that has really good passing and strong big guys in Wisconsin. That's going to be a fun game. Kansas getting stuck inside that three-point line. Everything a bit congested and everything off the dribble. Chalmers for three. Tipped by Arthur. Not there, and it is Lee who comes away with it. Kansas' inability to knock down perimeter shots in this game is starting to catch up with them because Arizona's really starting to pack it in. Jay, the real common denominator when you look at the second half and the success, Lee has been in there the entire second half, and he really has made a difference. He has. <laughs> Four fouls on Arthur, Ron Franklin, along with Jay Billis. Coming to you from Lawrence, Kansas. It was actually a late arriving crowd tonight. I told Jay as many times as I've come in here to do basketball games, maybe a little bit of a hangover, so to speak, over last night's loss in uh, that Big 12 matchup uh, against Missouri over at Arrowhead Stadium. But the place is packed now, and they're trying to help out their team, and they need to. KU is down by four. Almost stolen by Stewart. Bunninger. Nope. He rushed it. Stewart. For the Jayhawks. Rush Bunninger. That's three fouls on Bunninger. That was all created off the ball reversal from the skip pass. Anytime you can reverse the ball, you have a better opportunity to drive, to attack a closeout. And Kevin O'Neill not worried too much about fouls, just wants to get Buttinger out of there, get him a quick break before the four-minute timeout. Well, the alley-oop, Khan was there. The ball did everything but go down. Just a lot going on underneath him, and a little bit of contact. He wasn't able to finish it. And right now, there's more and more game pressure on Kansas to make a play. the floor knocked away by Chalmers and he'll get the outlet pass and jam it home. Two-point game. Boy, just a poor decision by Nick Wise to take that ball into traffic and not protect it. Now 
not just the students, everybody is up in Allen Fieldhouse. Now running Jared Bayless off screens, trying to get an opening for him. Bayless. Rebounded by Khan and a foul in the backcourt on Bayless. Frustration foul by Jared Bayless. Kevin O'Neill ran a play for him, tried to get him the ball, and he forced it and compounded the fourth shot with a foul. Well, Butterger, as far as actual game clock time, got to rest <laughs> maybe a minute. That's about it. Yeah, Kevin O'Neill can't afford to keep him out. There's no telling how long you'll have to go before you get to that under four minute timeout. Well, both uh, teams with six fouls here in the second half. The offense seems awfully congested for Kansas. Run, the runner, not there. Jackson in the follow. Was that Lee, I think, or Hill, I should say, who uh, got a hand on it. And at the other end, the littlest guy on the floor scores it wise with his third point, his first field goal. And he's trying to get some ball screens. And too easy for Mario Chalmers to get to the basket, finishes the play, and the opportunity for three. So let's take a timeout. Hill now with four fouls. Chalmers on the break. And he'll jam at home. And then Wise at the other end gets the pass. And, and the fake finger rolls it up and in for his third point. Let's take a break. Station 3, starting at 399. Kate's texting us from her dinner with Jeff. He brought her flowers. Oh. He took her to Chez Francois. Oh, nice. He went to Jared. He went to Jared. Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry, has five times the selection of ordinary jewelry stores, from the classic to the contemporary, so you'll find the perfect gift every time. It's for you. Do you have brothers? <laughs> <laughs> Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. some joy. Remember that Monday when the whole dorm was watching New England stick it to the struggling Dolphins? And what that crazy Pats fan said he'd do if Miami actually won? And how after Brady threw that duck, you gave him a chance to back out of it, but he stuck to his guns? And how no one thought he would actually go through with it, but when the Dolphins pulled off the upset of the season, he actually went through with it? Remember that? Well, this Monday, when those same Dolphins battle Big Ben, Willie Parker, and the Steelers, maybe he'll shave his head. This ESPN production is available on ESPN HD, presented by Olivia. Right now, let's take a look at tonight's game track, presented by PlayStation 3. Well, you can see Buttinger has had a spectacular game, and Rush, even when his minutes were supposed to be limited, has come in and has really done a solid job. Defensively, it's been difficult having to chase Buttinger around. The key, Arizona, has dominated the glass against a, a, a bigger Kansas team. I mean, Kansas was up in this game 20 to 9. In the first 10 minutes of the game, they had 20 points. This entire second half, they've only got 16. That's right. We were tied at 40 apiece at the intermission. Buttinger, quick turnaround, quick release, missed the jumper. Chalmers comes away with it. And Kansas very fortunate to get that rebound. Brillmeyer had inside position on the offensive glass. Brillmeyer. Uh, 
I think has just picked up the foul. That's four on him. If Roderick Stewart had taken one dribble to the baseline, Darrell Arthur had a layup. He was essentially leading him out of bounds. That's a long pass. Very fortunate to foul inside. But one quick dribble to the baseline, improve your passing angle, layup, perhaps even foul inside. Arthur gets the first one. Brill Meyer, interesting kid. He's a walk on. Uh, he is out of Mankato, Minnesota. And he's labeled by his teammates as the funniest guy on the team. And they say, what you see is what you get. And he works very, very hard. Well, he looks a lot better now than he did a couple of years ago when Arizona was out in Maui. He was bald back then. Had a shaved head. He looked like Dr. Evil. Now, now he's a much better looking Brett Vilmeyer. Wow, what a bad play by Nick Wise. They're shoving off his defender, trying to make that cut into the corner. Second just, foul on him. Just initiating the offense. Chalmers trying to shadow him, and he just elbowed him to the ground. And Chalmers may be putting an extra bit into it, but you can't afford to do that. Just make the cut. You can't give up possession like that in a game as important as this. Arthur. Stewart. Nope. Arthur, great hustle to get the ball back. And Stewart back on the perimeter. Chalmers for three. It's in place now. Well, luckily, we've got it in basketball. We've got a great one right here. Kansas needs to get a good look. Arizona really playing, really playing in. And they're almost in a zone. Chalmers. Scores it. Nice job. 12 points for him as Lee literally got backed out of the play and it opened the avenue. Well, good patience by Kansas. Chalmers able to turn that corner because Arizona was really packing in that defense. Eighth tie of the ball game. Buttinger. 16 seconds wow. on the shot clock, and he that's an impossible angle. Boy, and Stewart had done a great job defensively to force a difficult shot, and Buttinger knocked it down. 24 points for him. I don't know where this label somehow he, he got that he was soft or wasn't tough. That was a tough play. Bad shot by Arthur. So we are about to go under one minute. We are 59 seconds. 62-60, Arizona. Got to look to Buttinger again. Will Meyer trying to set a screen for him. And you can see him trying to push. Shot clock is down to six. There he is. Buttinger is there. Gets the fake. We want to travel oh. this ball. Wow. Boy, he got the defender off of his feet and was just trying to lean in, and Tom O'Neill said he shuffled his feet before doing it. What a turnaround. See him catching the ball, and he knows Stewart is trailing, and he might have shuffled the puppies just a bit. What a difficult call for Kansas. Now watch this previous possession, all the different ball fakes, and really, Stewart forced him into a difficult shot. That was inside of the line of the backboard on the baseline. And now Kansas with 35.7 seconds left. Down by two. You know, right now, this needs to be a big defensive stand by Arizona. If they can force a jump shot, box out. They've got a chance to win this thing right here. What they can't do is allow an easy drive, allow an offensive rebound, or to allow something easy inside, because that's what Kansas is going to look for. They want this ball to go inside. And right now, Kansas, their best player and their best offensive threat is Brandon Rush. But remember, he's played a lot of minutes in this game. 
Well, we talked about a show to a graphic off the top of the telecast that Bill Self has only lost five games here in Allen Fieldhouse since he has been the head coach, and not many clubs come in to Fog Allen Fieldhouse and come away with a victory. With the dribble weave and the ball screen, and right back to the ball screens, and wow, got a foul off the screen. Third foul on Nick Wise. And it's the tenth team foul, so that means they're going to shoot two. At the line, shooting two will be Mario Chalmers. Chalmers, 12 points, two of four from the free throw line. This has been a bit of an Achilles heel for Kansas. Not a great free throw shooting team. 11 of 16 tonight. This free throw blockout becomes huge for Arizona. Got them both. We're tied again. 62 apiece. Arizona wants a timeout, but they can take this all the way down for the last shot if they like. And Kevin O'Neill wants to take his young team with an opportunity to win at Fog Island Fieldhouse. And Kevin O'Neill still getting into the official about the foul and then the travel call on Nick Wise. All right, the, the worst kept secret in Allen Fieldhouse is the fact that the redhead is the guy probably that's going to take the shot. If you don't go with that high percentage, who else would you go to, Jay? Well, I think you go with Buttinger first and foremost. And, and what they can do and what they've done in the past is they can run a little one four set, four along the baseline, one up top, and that one would be Chase Buttinger and just let him go one on one to take the last shot with the opportunity maybe for a tip in. But right now, I mean, Arizona's in a great position, tied at 62, with just over 21 seconds to be able to take the last shot and win or go into overtime. But you want the opportunity to win here when you're on the road. You know, you, obviously, they don't want to go into overtime. That's advantage Kansas. Well, as far as KU is concerned, also keep one other thing in mind. We talked about maybe a little bit of a hangover from last night's ball game. KU does not want to lose two nights in a row to a young man by the name of Chase. Last night it was Chase Daniel, the quarterback for Missouri, and tonight Chase Buttiger is the man who has had the sword and has been very mighty with it. Let's see if he does get the opportunity to win this thing for the Wildcats. 21.6 seconds left, tied at 62. Right now for Arizona, job number one is successfully inbounding the ball. This is Wise. Buttinger over in the right corner. And here he comes. Weaving him around screens, trying to run Stewart around. Bill Meyer not there. Rush has it, gets a shot away. Oh! It did everything but go down. A shot by Brandon Rush. Arizona did not do a good job of getting the shot that they wanted. And Chase Buttinger's got to come get that ball. He can't just dance around along the baseline, but what a miracle that could have been. Grillmeyer wide open for the shot, shot it a bit too early. He probably should have just taken it to the rim. Oh, how soft was that shot just tantalizingly up on the rim. Look, wide open lane to the basket. Brillmeyer probably should have taken it right to the rim. But the quick shot and the rebound. Good job by Brillmeyer to slow the advance. But look how this thing hangs on the rim. Oh. So if you are just now joining us as we take a look at more replays, we were tied at halftime, 40 apiece, and now we're tied at the end of regulation at 62 apiece. And who would have thought that this Arizona team that gave up 51% shooting to Virginia in a home loss, 3-1 and one coming into this game without their head coach, Lute Olson, would come on the road in Fog Allen Fieldhouse against the number four team in the country and take this team to overtime. Well, you said it. 
back just uh, beyond uh, 10 minutes to play in the in the first half and that is that Kansas was allowing this uh, Arizona team to stay in it and that they were talented enough and played hard enough that they would not only stick around and make a game out of it that's exactly what has happened and the truth is I mean Kansas got the benefit of a couple of very fortunate calls I'm not saying they were incorrect by any means but for Buttinger to get called with a walk when he was about to get a foul call and perhaps three free throws and then Nick Wise to get a foul off that pick and roll this could have been very different in a heartbeat. So we're set for overtime. Jordan Hill against Sasha Khan, and it'll be KU on offense first here in overtime. Quick duck in. Well, Grillmeyer doing a nice job on Terrell Arthur inside, and Broderick Stewart makes yet another big play. Stewart will go to the line with an opportunity for a three-point play, and maybe even bigger, Bodiger is the man who picked up the foul, and that is four on him. Yeah, just a weak foul by Buttinger, got picked off by the back screen by Sasha Khan, and that's how you take the ball hard to the basket. That's the specialty of Roderick Stewart, who's a magnificent athlete and has the chance to be a really good defender. Not a shooter, but he can put the ball in the deck. Stewart with 13. Elbow screens to a high low. Buttiger for three. Wow. Well, he doesn't need much time to get it off. The quick trigger jumper. 27 points. And KU did not have anybody back to help out on the inbounds pass. Bill Self is livid on the sideline. So we'll take a timeout. 422 left in overtime. We're tied again. 65 each. on here's the situation you've got two children college tuition is in sight retirement is breathing down your neck who do you go to in the clutch over 65 million customers rely on us when their money is on the line insurance investments retirement aig the strength to be there Diamonds, the jewelry exchange imports diamonds direct from site holders. We have thousands, most GIA and EGL certified, laser inscribed, and guaranteed the lowest price. Half carat fancies are $3.99. One carat solitaires are $5.99, $9.90, and $15.90. Two carat solitaires, $19.90, and certified ISI quality, $2,900. We also have super large rounds and fancies, D flawless, and GIA triple excellent makes. Plus, we set while you watch. Buy Factory Direct, the jewelry exchange nationwide. Tied at 65, tied at halftime at 40, 62 apiece at the end of regulation, and now we're in overtime. Arizona running a play they call horns, some angled ball screens at the elbow of the free throw line, and they were able to hit Brillmeyer, who executes a little handoff option. Now watch the defender, Stewart. He goes underneath this handoff, and Buttinger is going to be able to just stop and shoot over it. You've really got to chase him around, make him curl, because he got defensive help right there. And a great job by Buttinger of stopping on a dime, going underneath. That gives him just enough space to pull the trigger on that jump shot. That is a big-time play by Chase Buttinger and a great read. Buttinger, season high, 27 points. Keep in mind, he picked up his fourth foul just a moment ago. Well, he'll be guarding. Roderick Stewart, who is not a perimeter shooter, but has shown his ability to put the ball on the deck. The lob inside. Arthur oh. lost the handle. He was right there. Executed perfectly. Getting the ball to the high post. The seal moved him up the lane. And I mean, that was Dunk City for Darrell Arthur. Wow. Chalmers falls down. But 
Tiger. Defender ran by him. Put up an air ball. Well, he's wide open off that flare screen, too. Everybody from Arizona now essentially staying home in the lane. Arthur. 12-footer along the baseline nails it. A nice little pick and pop, and if you can play that with Darrell Arthur, if he can hit that shot consistently, right, we're looking at a big-time college basketball player. Inside to Jordan, and it is blocked by Arthur. You see Arthur coming out to set this little ball screen. There comes the screen, and then he's going to just pop to the corner. You can see Hill trying to help out Jordan Hill and leaving him open, and that's a terrific shot. Then he comes down the other end, makes a great block. Here's a young man we haven't heard much from in a while, is Bayless. And Robinson picks up a foul. Four on Russell Robinson, trying to hold on to Buttinger. More importantly, let's Buttinger go to the free throw line and score a couple of easy ones to get Arizona tied again at 67. He missed. Well, a lot about this game, Ron, in the late stages is going to be about which team blinks. Which team is going to be tougher, mentally and physically? Chalmers misses the runner. Arthur on the foul. Right now, Darrell Arthur has been King Arthur. Making plays on both ends. Well, he now has 20 points. Hill tried to jam it home. Oh, rush on the steal. Arizona needs a timeout here. Six-point margin at KU. 2-12 to play. Brett Brillmeyer throws just a bad pass here. A diagonal pass that allows Brush to shoot the gap. And the easy finish for the six-point lead. I mean, you could see that coming a mile away. And right now, Arizona needs to snap out of it. They went to the huddle dejected. Down six, there is plenty of time left in this game. Six points is only a two-possession ball game. They need to pick their chins up off their chest and fight for this game because it is still gettable. Here's a test right now of the mental toughness of Arizona. Can they knuckle under and get a score here, whether it's a two or a three? and put a little game pressure back on Kansas, who's been flying high the last few possessions. Bayless traveled. Boy, a great defensive possession by Kansas. It was Kansas, the team that answered the bell. The hard show. And Chalmers, step for step with Jared Bayless, who just dragged that foot. Kansas can use plenty of clock here. Wait till it gets down to 13 or 14. Now the runout ball screen. Jackson with the screen. Rush needs one more point to hit a career of 1,000. Hill 
And Jordan quiets the crowd here at Allen Fieldhouse for a moment. Still a six point game. A much better job of executing offense in this overtime period for Kansas. And right now they are trying to spread out Arizona, take some time off this clock. One minute, one minute remaining. Under one minute to play in our first overtime. Robinson dishes it off to Arthur and Bayless with the steal Arthur and now back to Brillmeyer. They've got numbers. Well, Bayless needs to go. Took it to the hoop and he was fouled and an opportunity for a three point play. How about the strength. I mean Bayless was challenged. Body to body, and he just threw the defender off of him in midair and still made the play. Fourth foul on Chalmers. Got a one possession game. Just under 41 seconds. Arizona does not have to foul. Davis now with 19 points. Now with 30 seconds, 30 seconds left in our first overtime. And that is the fifth foul on Buttinger. That is not what Kevin O'Neill wanted. We could see him saying, I wanted. Yeah, he wanted to say if they were going to foul, he certainly wanted somebody else to foul, and he wanted someone else fouled. With who is left on the floor? Bayless almost now becomes the go-to guy, doesn't he? And he fouled. He was looking over at the bench. You can see it's never when when, when a player's palms are up, never a good sign. Uh, but he knew he knew he had four fouls, but thought he was doing what his coach wanted him to do, just a failure in communication. That's how young players learn late game situations. Brandon Rush, as we mentioned, 999 points for his career. And he goes to the free throw line trying to become one of a lot of big names for Kansas University to achieve 1,000 points or better in a career. Missed the first one. Now, even if he makes this, there's still a lot of time left to extend this game. Arizona needs to get the ball down the floor and get a quick two. He got it. The 49th player in KU history to score at least 1,000 points. Four-point lead. Wise with the bouncer, Bayless. Three-pointer not there. Stewart with the rebound, and KU Need to foul. now running it out. Brillmeyer with the foul. The Arizona didn't need that three. They needed to take the ball to the basket. Kansas did not want to foul. If they could draw the defense in and kick it to an open shooter, fine. But Bayless needed to get that ball to the rim. Brillmeyer with his fifth. This has been a game that Kansas has survived. And obviously with 12.2 seconds left, it isn't over. Ron Franklin, Jay Billis coming to you from Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas. We're in overtime and the Jayhawks in a position with a four point lead and Robinson going to the free throw line. If Russell Robinson were to score here, it would be his first point or points of the evening, which Jay is rare indeed. But offensively, it has not been a night that he would like to remember. Well, it's not going to go on his career highlight reel, but knocking these free throws down. Certainly important to help seal a win. A little bit of a smile there from Russell. Arizona, if he makes this, needs to inbound this ball, get it down for a quick three, and then try to get a steal or foul right away. 
So Russell Robinson with his first two points, but they're huge because it gives KU a six point margin. Under 10 seconds, Wise takes it the distance and scores. And now 6.9 seconds, Robinson. What a foul. in overtime but Kansas finally subdues a very stubborn and hard fighting Wildcat team from the University of Arizona. So the Big 12 picks up the first victory in this matchup between the Big 12 and the Pac-10 Hardwood Series. So once again our final score in overtime is KU 76 and Arizona 72. Coming up next on ESPN it's College Football Live. For more on this game tune to ESPN News for a post game extra. For more information log on to ESPN.com. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports. Now for Jay Billis and our entire ESPN crew I'm Ron Franklin saying good night everybody from Lawrence Kansas.